Good morning, everyone. We have a fabulous project today. We're going to make a set. We're going to make this beautiful, cozy, warm pom-pom tube with removable pom-pom and four layers of fleece covering your ears and a lovely little matching neck warmer scarf to go with it. You can add this little optional tie so you can tighten it or loosen it as you see fit or just leave it off completely. This is a super easy sewing project. A beginner can make this set and I'm excited to share this pattern with you for both of these items. So come on inside, let's get started. Let's make ourselves a cozy warm pom-pom tooth and matching neck warmer scarf set. So the neck warmer pattern is quite large and as you can see from the pattern that we sell on our website we've just done a half size so you're going to put it together there. Our pattern also includes templates for the pom-poms and I've given three sizes in our online pattern. Um, because depending on the fur, you may not need to use the large template that I'm going to use today. Uh, my fur is between two and a half to three inches long strands, so as you can see, it makes a big pom pom. Uh, if you're going to make this for a guy, he might want a smaller pom pom or he might not want a pom pom at all. So, depending on the colors that you pick, you're going to have either a unisex design or maybe one that's geared towards a man or a woman. Uh, I would suggest that you stop the video and transcribe the measurements that I have here. And I'm just giving you half the neck warmer, but you're going to cut it on the fold. Use a good quality polar fleece. Uh, you'll need about two thirds of a yard or two thirds of a meter to do both the neck warmer and the hat. You can cut it right up the middle if you like because most of the fleece uh, fabrics are in that 60 inch width range. And I'm going to serge along my long edge with the, the little point at the bottom there and across the top. If you don't have a serger, fleece does not fray so you don't need to worry about finishing the edge. Maybe you could do a decorative stitch but I'm in business so I like to have a finished edge. And now I'm just going to sew the two end pieces right sides together along that entire 8 inch stretch. And afterwards I'm going to uh, do a top stitch to flatten both those raw edges on either side of the seam. Now I ha always have a problem with printed fleeces, um, especially ones that are plaids. It seems like one side is always a little bit off and that's the case here. So when you see me turn this over, you might notice that the, the lines going um, vertically aren't really matching. They will on the toque. This I'm lucky that half of the fleece seems to have been printed on a the right up and down on the 90 degree angle, but in this case, the side I, I'm using for the neck warmer is a little bit off, but it won't matter. So just be mindful of that when you're in a shop looking at fleece, just check to see if the pattern is printed correctly on, um, on both sides of that fold that they usually sell it in. So now I am going to pin the wrong sides together and working on the on the wrong side on the inside of the neck warmer I'm going to measure four inches or 10 centimeters down all the way around and just sort of clip it in place and I will sew that closed along the in, inside of this the serge that I've made so I'll have a nice seam all the way around where the double layer ends uh, that that's about four inches down or 10 centimeters down. 
from the top of the piece. And my clips will help hold that in place. And there you can see how the print's not quite matching up, but I'm not gonna worry about that with the neck warmer. Right, now I could stop here. It'd be a nice, loose, but still very effective neck warmer scarf. Not uncomfortable, but we're gonna do some extra touches. So I'm going to show you how to make a casing for elastic, which would be nice for a gentleman, you know, just to tighten it a little bit around the face in case he needs to pull it up or you need to pull yours up uh, over your nose and your mouth. So I'm going to work about an inch down from the top fold line and I'm just going to sew all the way around to make a casing for my elastic and I'm going to back tack when I get to that back seam um, a few times. And I'm going to open that up with my handy dandy seam ripper and create a place where I can insert some elastic with my bodkin. It's a personal choice how tight you want to pull the elastic. Just a slight um, gather in is very effective. I'm using quarter inch elastic, a flat elastic. And once I determine how gathered I want it to be, I'll just tie it in, uh, in a triple knot to hold it in place. You can use the shock cord elastic, which is round and a toggle, and that way you could tighten it and loosen it as you see fit. just sort of move that knot inside the casing. Now, um, the other option is to just sew a decorative tie across part of the front. So uh, maybe six or seven inches across the front and still within that double um, cuff area, but perhaps maybe two and a half inches down from the top edge. And just pin it in place where you think it would look nice and you can even try it on with the pins and see if that uh, gathers it up enough for your comfort. Sewing it in place was a seam of about six inches or 16 centimeters in length. I made my tie from a little bit of the off cut from cutting out the, the neck warmer. So it's about an inch uh, deep and about 30 inches long. And then I pulled it to give it that slight um, rolled look. So the tie is, is stretchy. And then you can finish the ends with a little knot. Or you can tie it. Uh, or, or you can finish the ends with a with a cut on an angle on a 45 degree angle. 
I suppose you could fringe the ends or put a bead in before you tie the knot. All sorts of possibilities. I really like this tie though, and if you wanted the fit to be loose, you could just let the uh, tie ends hang down and not have them tied at all, and that would look really nice too. So now we're going to do the toque, and it's a really easy pattern. It's just a really long, deep rectangle that you're going to fold over. The stretchy part of your toque is the part that's going around your head, so that'll be 23 and a half inches or 60 centimeters. And then you're going to make it a little bit deeper, so 24 inches or 61, 62 centimeters in length. And we're going to try and match the pattern on that long back seam, pinning it in place. And then we're going to sew. Oh, and the seam width that I'm using for both these projects is a 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam. And then once we finish sewing the two um, ends together, right sides together, we're going to do the same thing that we did on the back of our neck warmer. We're going to sew the raw edge of, on either side of that seam down flat with a top stitch. And it's a little bit tricky, so just take your time because you're going to turn this right side out and work on the front side of your uh, tooth body sort of following the seam and, and maybe using the width of your presser foot to give you the width of uh, each top stitch. And there's a lot of fabric there, so it requires stopping and starting and stopping and starting to get the, the, the seam out from underneath the big bulk of the fabric. And when I get down to the bottom, I just pivot and turn around and come back up the other side. All right, so I'm gonna turn it out now, right sides out. I'm gonna have a very long tube. I'm going to match up my back seam and I'm just going to sew those two raw edges together. So I'm sewing all around what's going to be the top of the hat. So now I, instead of a long single layer tube, I have a double layer tube that's half as long. So two layers of cozy fleece and I could uh, wear this hat when it's finished as a two layer hat and I'd have a really fashionable baggy top that sort of would look like all the knitted hats with pom-poms but ours will be lots warmer and cozier right now I've also just gone around that seam with my serger if you have a serger by all means do that but if you don't you don't need to worry because that seam is going to be inside the hat and I'm going to find the perfect place for me to balance out this hat. I need about an inch from the top uh, between the top and that seam that I just created because I'm going to make a channel for elastic to go into the top and I need about an inch down from the top. You can go a little bit further. Your pom-pom is going to cover up all sorts of things at the top. We don't need anything really covered because it's going to be very neat and tidy but at least an inch down and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just sort of balancing out the pattern because at the bottom, at the other end of the hat, that's where I'm going to have a cuff. And because my hat has a print, I want the cuff to look even when it's turned up. So I'm more concerned about having the um, print in balance at the folded bottom edge than I am at the top where I'm going to make an elastic casing. I'm clipping now where I think this is going to be perfect. 
that will help hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna sew on top of my serge seam. And if you don't have a serge seam, you can sew on either side of your, um, your, your regular sewing seam to make this casing. And I'm just sewing on top of my serge seam so I don't even need to use my handy dandy magnetic measure. I love my seam measure that's a magnet. But if you've seen some of my videos, you know that about, about me already. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna straighten this out and make sure it's flat. And now I'm gonna notch the fleece. So I'm gonna cut out little notches that are about uh, three quarters of an inch or two centimeters at the, at the outside edge and then go into a point. I'm not gonna cut through that seam that I just made though. I'm gonna do this in between the seam and that top edge of the hat. And what I'm doing is I'm removing some of the bulk because we have two layers of fleece and so it's quite bulky and we want to remove a little bit of that if we can just so that we're going to get a nice tight gather we don't want the gather to be completely closed however because we need to stick the tab that we're going to put on our pom-pom through the top and that will be our next step after we finish this toque and we're almost finished so cutting out these little notches gives me less fleece to try to deal with when I'm gathering the top and it makes a really lovely gather. I'm still using the quarter inch elastic and I'm threading my bodkin and I'll just go around the top. It's pretty easy to do with those notches. And once I get the elastic threaded, I can start um, pulling it tight and I can save some elastic. I'm just working off of the spool. So I didn't cut the end yet. But I will start getting it gathered and I will do two or three knots, triple knots is best. And just working that gathering around before I do that though. And I'll trim close to the uh, the knot, but I'll leave a, a little bit of an end there. Uh, again, it's going to be hidden by the pom pom, or you can push it on into the inside, which I'm doing now. I'm just going around and and putting the edges of those notches towards the inside of the hat. It really makes a nice gather. And it's not bulky inside. I see all these weird patterns right now on YouTube with this twisted top and it's just a, well, I, I can't imagine that it's that comfortable to wear. And there's my toque. And there's my cuff. And now I need to make a pom-pom. I have a story to tell about this fur that I'm going to use for the pom-pom. Last week that was white fur, but I found a, a bottle of um, writ liquid dye in charcoal and I thought, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I tried to dye some of my white fur charcoal. And I didn't use a lot, maybe um, two tablespoons. And uh, this is what I got and I'm really pleased. So, you know, if you can't find fur that you like in black, because black is my go-to color, but it's very difficult to find. So um, consider getting some dye 
and you may not get a true dark shade of any color that you buy the dye for but it probably will be complementary to your hat and when you're cutting um, fur just do it very slowly and only cut the backing now I'm gonna make a tab in the direction that doesn't stretch from my fleece and I'm gonna sew it onto one part of my my pom-pom where the fur is moving away from the edge you can see that the fur has a definite nap to it so I want to put my tab on the edge where the fur is going in the other direction and now I'm going to use my giant needle and my premium high loft fill to make a really nice pom-pom And use the thickest um, thread or, or string that you can get into your biggest needle that will be sharp enough to go through this fur. And I use a double strand because I really need this pom-pom to be strong. And I'm just gonna do a basting stitch. Each stitch is about a half an inch or a centimeter long or a centimeter and a half or maybe two centimeters and go all the way around and make a little bowl and I'm gonna also go through that tab that I made that tab is gonna be going inside the hat and I come over to the uh, end of the of the thread that I started with where I tied a nice strong knot and now I'm gonna just Fill that little pocket, that little bowl, with some of this polyester premium high loft fill. And I'm using a small handful and sort of just smoothing it out a little bit into a ball before I put it into the pom pom. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work it in and sort of tighten my thread and try to make sure that none of the ends of the fur are going inside the pom-pom. And once I have the thread tightened, I'll tie the two ends together because I left about three or four inches on that end of the knot when I started so that I would have an end to tie this knot, this finishing knot with. And it's another triple knot. Give it a couple of hits to fluff it up and look at that. And when it's on your hat, you can fluff it up just by tapping your hat on the side of your leg. Pom poms are fun. So I'm using a good quality um, pin. It's about an inch and three quarters or four centimeters long. It's a nickel plated pin. And I've designed this pom pom with the pin so that you can take the pom pom off of the hat if you want to wash it in a washing machine. Pom pom is a little bit delicate, so there's no point in washing it in a machine. So we're going to do um, almost, we're going to pretend like the pin is a needle and thread and we're going to baste it through that tab as close to the top of the hat as possible. So pull it tight and then into the other side of the top. So working from one side of the top to the other through the tab and look at that. Perfect. Beautiful. I love it. Questions, comments, you know the drill, leave them below. I hope you enjoyed today's project as much as I did. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel. I have a 36 year career in millinery and I've said this before and I'll say it again, we're just getting started. We only launched this channel actively in the last three months. So uh, you can well imagine 36 years, there's gonna be lots of projects and patterns that I think you're really gonna enjoy over the next several years while I retire. <laughs> anyway, this has been a great experience for me 
and I'm really grateful for all your support. Now, with this project, remember that you can just leave the neck warmer plain. You don't have to do anything more than just do a nice cowl, loose neck warmer scarf. This will be an excellent Christmas present or a great addition to any sewing business too. So it's starting to get a little cooler in Canada. I don't know where you are, but if you're in a place that has a cool weather season, you're gonna love this. And make it out of polar fleece. This is the only fabric that I'm recommending for this project. And once again, the toque can be worn as a sloppy toque with a long, deep fit where the pom-pom will just sort of hang down the back or you can roll up the cuff as I have. You've got four layers of fleece to cover your ears. All right, so subscribe to the channel, like this video, and come back next week for our next project. Happy sewing. Thanks for watching. Bye.